Good morning. I'm Wendy Rudd, village agent in South Somerset. And for our usual Friday morning talking cafes, we're back. And today we're really lucky that we have Jess, Reverend Jess. <laughs> and she is going to be uh, presenting another fantastic cooking session um, <laughs> cooking on a budget. And to that end, I have done my usual little poem and it's called cooking with jess and it's come on guys let's get cooking recipe book out and start cooking for a delicious tempting feast that everyone will want to eat or just like jess you can use whatever's left there's nothing to lose mine's a curry what's your choice come on now let's hear your voice Will yours be a great cream tea with a table set with finery? Or will you go for something new, or something sticky that you can chew? Cook together and enjoy the food. It'll put you in a happy mood. So let your talent really shine. You'll be a great cook in no time. And that now brings us to saying good morning to Jess. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, so, morning. What can I say? What delights are you concocting for us today? Well, I am just, while you were reading your lovely poem, thank you, I've just started to um, put some cooking apples on. So I'm doing something with cooking apples because I've just been left loads and loads in the last few days. And um, I think you can probably get them from nowhere for nothing from someone and just start cooking them so just quite simple to peel i'm not going to show you how to um peel an apple really but i'll just peel another one you have lots of people put boxes don't you outside their um gates these days when they've got surplus that you can just help yourself to so you can get them for free yeah and they really really want you to take it i th i used to be quite shy about that and think, oh no, oh no, I don't know them. But they really want you to take it because they don't want it to waste. And the other thing that I've learned with um, cooking apples, people keep bringing me eating apples as well. These lovely little eaters, they've got hundreds and hundreds of them. I just um, get me a little plastic tub, peel them, slice them up, and whip them in a space in the freezer. And then oh, right. you've got them ready for the bed. So you just so, do them raw? Yeah, yeah, just do them raw, don't do anything to them, just literally cut them up when you get hold of them. And then for weeks and weeks ahead, you've actually got some fruit. Oh, yeah, that's a very good idea. My other, my other favourite is the reduced stuff. It's Tesco's for me, wherever you go. I had some plums as well. Oh, so, right. I'm just going to cut the plums in half. And if you ask me how much are you putting in there, what I've got is what I'm putting in there. I think we worry too much about the amounts and um, what we're going to do with it. So I'm just going to whack it in because the good Lord, you know, made all these lovely fruits and they work very well together. So we'll just, yes. we'll just go with that. And I've got a tiny drop of water in the pan. One thing. It goes really mushy if you put too much water. So okay. Just a yeah. tiny drop of water in the pan and add mm -hmm. to that so it doesn't go too mushy because as the fruit cooks, it will make its own juice. So I'm just putting some plums in there. It's going to be a lovely apple and plum crumble and it's already boiling away. Okay. So how long are you going to, how long are you going to actually cook that for? Sorry? I'm gonna cook that and I'm, I'm gonna cook that until it's done, unhelpfully. But um, so there's not a set time when the apple before it goes really mushy and before yeah. it comes, so I did the apple first because they're harder. So I had some pears, but somebody else has obviously had some of them and I didn't have enough. So if I have pears, I do pears first, they take longer, then add apple. And then put the plum in because it's softer. It'll cook okay. Quicker. So that is all softening down. This is the bit of crumble. Okay. Everyone knows how to do it. 
Did you watch that um, Britain's Got Talent? Everybody's good at something. I always like to make crumble. The lady with the keyboard. Yes, yes. Here we are. This is just, I have got 12 ounces of plain flour and six ounces. I've just got cheap margarine. All the recipes say butter, but margarine will do just as well, you know. And so and technically, if you're doing 12 ounces to six ounces, so it's double flour to butter. So it doesn't matter what quantity what you. Yeah, that's, so if yeah. you want to do six ounces, it's three ounces of butter. So it's twice as much flour as margarine. So you just rub that in with your hands. And then depending on what you like, um, and depending on how sweet you like it, it's two or three ounces of sugar. I'm actually going to use demerara because it makes it a bit crunchy. All oh, right, I've yeah. I've got my lips over there. And it also gives it a bit of colour. If you like cinnamon or something, and you've got some cinnamon in the cupboard, if you just sprinkle that in, that also gives a really lovely flavour. If you want a very white crumble, just use granulated sugar. You don't even have to use caster sugar. You can get away with granulated. Look okay. at that. Dun, dun. There we go. Crumble. One crumble. Yep, no, and that so, took no time at all, did it? In that time. And actually, because the top of my hob's really going for it, there's the apple and the plum. Oh, right, so yes. You still still see, yeah, there's still chunks. It's shape, but if you like it mushy, let it cook down. If you yep. like it a bit firmer, it's it's just that principle, but avoid too much water is what I'm always saying. Oh. Well, I just thought I'd let you know that we've had good mornings from Julie. Caroline, you know, and um, Anna, we do have them watching us and imagining all the aromas to come out of your kitchen. I was going to say, if only you could smell this. Only you could smell this. <laughs> we're, we're certainly on the same wavelength, aren't we? <laughs> and then it's just as simple as, as that. I'm sorry, I'm probably teaching you all know how to make a crumble. Has anybody got any tips for me? The thing I do with, if I'm doing what I term a deluxe crumble, is I uh, put a handful of rolled oats in it, some porridge oats. Yes. And then if I'm feeling really glam and I have baked cake or something, or manage to get some cheap walnuts or um, yeah. pecan nut things, I, I mix those in as well. But that doesn't happen terribly often. So that's gone in. Wendy, can you keep talking while I wash my hands, please? I can certainly try and keep talking. Um, so, as you say, um, the apple crumble is now done. Very, very simple. Um, you um, can add cinnamon, there's nutmeg, yeah. demerara sugar, if you like. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna and go as you say. I'm going to go on to another freebie, sorry. Okay, no, um, wonderful. Is, um, I've been given lots of tomatoes. It's another thing at this time of year. They do tend to have quite tough skins and it can put people off. But actually, the flavour's really, really good. So I was just doing this with Wendy before we kept went live, actually. And look, I can just get the skin off my tomato. And all I did, I'll show you how I do that. You just get your tomato, cut a little cross in the bottom, and put them all, just pour a kettle of boiling water over the top and leave them. And you will find after a few minutes that that skin, which is such a nightmare and gets stuck in your teeth when you're trying to look beautiful, just peels right off as simply as that. And um, you know when you try sometimes to blend it away and it won't go away, that that will do it perfectly. 
So right, you know, olive oil in a pan there. That was something I didn't oh. know about the tomatoes. Oh, can you hear that? I can. That was it. That was I've got red onions. Because it's a little bit sweet. Red though. onions. Just a finely chopped red onion. Where they went to Tesco, there was a reduced bag of carrot, little carrot sticks. So, you know, the bargain hunter and me and the lazy bit thought marvellous, because if I just chop those up really tiny, that will go in there as well. Okay. And so I we've got one of the best things in any soup is celery, but chop it up really, really fine. Chop it up really, really fine. And that makes the best base. If you, if you look on any stock cube or nearly anything that you buy, it always, always has celery in it. And it's one of the sort of best flavours you can put in to make a base. So, so although it's well, tomato... Let's it try a bit. Sorry. Yeah, so although it's tomato soup... You're popping in onions, celery, carrots, just like small quantities, yes. just to, to give it more. It would be the equivalent of a little carrot, half of a big red onion, or just a red onion. And again, I would say to you, it doesn't matter that much. So if you've got the celery I used was at the back of the fridge, looking a bit unloved and manky. Right. It's the rest of that. So I can't bear waste. Oh, I can't show it to you. It, yeah, it's not anything special. So actually, yeah. I could have used more of that because it's not going to spoil the flavour. It just gives a bit of a background. I always keep some garlic puree in the fridge door. Okay. Square. If you don't like it, don't have it. If you love it, squirt longer. That's what I say. If you love it, just squirt it a bit longer. So that's just sort of sweating away there. So I think if you want to cook on a budget, the faster you can cook things, the better it is, the cheaper it is. So okay. lots of budget recipes actually offer you something that you cook for hours. But when I don't actually want to run up a huge gas bill or a lecky bill, so chop everything. I've learned to chop everything really small. It takes much less time to cook. And okay, yeah, because dress. that is the problem yeah. with a lot of people. If, if they're really busy as well, um, it yeah. is that stops them doing, as you say, all of the fresh vegetables and everything else is the time. So if you're cooking yeah. it really quick, then that is, as you say, that is the solution, isn't it, yeah. to... And it's and so much me, if it's fresh. As you see me cooking this manic um, creativity here now, this is what I would normally do as well, because I work full time, got a big family, do all kinds of things, like everybody else, watching the pennies, trying to watch the pennies, not doing so well on that bit. But um, I would cook lots of things at once and put them back in the fridge. So you sort of get in the mode. I think it, it all makes it cheaper and easier. Those tomatoes, because they were in boiling water, they've actually already started to cook a bit as well. All right. So I'm just cutting them into quarters, and they're going in on top of that other vegetable. Crumbles cooking. And, and tomatoes, 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 tomatoes as well. I was yeah. going to say, I, I, I was going to ask what was the yellow, and they're tomatoes. Oh, it was free, yeah. Somebody somebody gave them to me, so I don't know how they affect the taste of the soup, but they taste lovely and tomatoey. I think they might make so, it more of a hind colour. <laughs> yes. They might sort of mellow yellow it. I've still got one tomato here. Don't like to waste it. Don't like to waste no. it. No. I think all those years ago, my grandmother saying to me, don't you waste that. There's people. Yeah, waste not, that. want not. Yeah, it's starting to smell nice. So, so 
So the tomato soup is on its way to being cooked. It does need a, a bit of help from tomato puree. Yes. You that's know, cheap. I mean, we say it's fresh tomato, but most of us have got, I think the cheapest you can get one of these, a nidl or something, is about 27p. Yes, you, yes. You, you know, you can just use them on and on and keep them in the fridge, can't you? Yes. So a good splurge. A good splurge. Hang on, I'll just put me garlic and me tomato puree back in the fridge. Okay. So um, thanks and to I'm my colleague uh, is um, typing in the comments for us. Um, she's keeping um, almost running commentary of frying the tomatoes and the onions and uh, picking up small. Um, and as you say, it's quicker to cook and faster to your tummy. Yeah. <laughs> Which is one of my main priorities. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's especially when you when you're hungry and you start smelling it. I just crumbled into there um two vegetable stock cubes. I put okay. two. It's rather naughty. I quite like things to be seasoned, maybe a little bit salty. So if you're trying yeah. that, if you want to put one veggie stock cube in, and then when you taste it, it won't hurt to put another one in. A little bit later on when you have a taste and i'm going to add some boiled water to that so i'm not going to boil the kettle again because i'll be like that but that's the remains of the kettle i boiled for the tomatoes okay and how do you know how much do you just sort of do it to the top of the tomatoes or yeah just a little bit above so, so, it's just above the tomatoes. So, it's in there just yep. looking like that. And oh, watch fresh tomatoes, they've got so much more flavor than tin ones. And I did look up a recipe because when they said to me, We've got recipes, I said, No, I just wing it. But I did look one up, and it actually said, Make tomato soup in September when the tomatoes have got their strongest flavour. So I thought, oh. well, there we are then. It was like I actually knew There we go. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's got a use for the skins for a beauty treatment or something. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always the compost team. <laughs> good for the garden because tomatoes have properties not found in some of the other vegetables. They're very rich in vitamin A, if I'm right. Um, Oh, yeah, as you say, compost heap. They've got to, they've got to add fibre and stuff to your compost. So. Yeah. So I said we'd do a quick chicken casserole as well, cheap. So I would, I'm trying to do this to show you and put things in the oven. But if I'm using the oven, I don't just use it for one thing. So I might even do jacket potatoes on a day when I'm making other things put them back in the fridge and then whack them in the microwave for a minute or so to heat it up and use them again. When, whenever the oven is going, I tend to maximise on it as well. I haven't yes. got enough work. Otherwise, I'd have done a cake as well, and you could do a cake afterwards. And I just started this a little bit earlier on. Chicken. These chicken legs, they're massive. And I, chicken also tastes better, I think, if you cook it with a bone in it. It actually ends up with more flavour. And I purposely left the skin on. But uh, you might not want to. You might want to take that off. These, all of that chicken, was actually £2.20 in Tesco's. And okay. I, I hadn't discovered that there was anything at that sort of price until we were doing lots of shopping through lockdown. And a lady right. who took her lip every week and she'd ask for chicken legs and i wasn't doing her shopping and i thought i'm gonna have a look i couldn't believe it they're just over two pounds most supermarkets have the same and i've been using them ever since they make the best chicken casserole just oh right that really is good value for money it is i just put them in a really hot frying pan no oil so i left the skin on just put them face down and turn them over to brown them again to add a little bit more flavour because 
some of the cheaper chicken doesn't necessarily taste that well, so you've got to give it a bit of help. Okay. And then we're back, no surprise, I've got a bigger pan on, onions. Where would we be without onions? Indeed. Onions, onions are just incredible, aren't they? They, yes, they, and they really are. And now we have the selection of onions. I remember as a child, I only ever saw white onions. And now, when you go, you have a plethora now of, of an arrangement of colours. Um, yeah, I, I'm prone to using a lot of onions myself in cooking. That's that's one of my state basics. I'm just going to chop a bit more. Because this is going to end up in the oven as well. I usually do one really fine, one half, and then half of an onion, thicker chopped, because I actually quite like, you know, a bit of onion. Yeah. So that you know you're eating it. So that's and if like me, you find, I find onion has quite a squeaky texture to eat, which it's a bit like chalk on a, on a, on a, on a board for me. <laughs> Just, just keep it diced fine. <laughs> I love the flavour, but as I say, I, I can't cope yeah. with the texture. <laughs> I, I always hoover up after a Chinese takeaway in our house because everything's got those big bits of onion in, doesn't it? Yeah. In the sauce. Nobody yeah. else likes that, and I go round at the end and do all the big bits of onion. Absolutely amazing. And again, onions are very good for you, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah. So you can say, what vegetable shall I put in a chicken casserole? Whatever's lying in the bottom of the fridge or right at the back of the vegetable rack that you thought didn't have any life in it. That was, you know, this is a, a leek that's been there for quite a while. So I've just chopped it into rings and that's going in. There was a lovely sweet potato. <laughs> so it's been chopped up, smallish. And it's going in. There is this, um, oh gosh, I don't know, 8p bag of carrots in the machine. Okay. Section. So, half the work's already done for me. I don't normally buy them cut up because they're more expensive. But if they're reduced like that, and they're going to make it quicker. And because there were lots of them, this is going to be a carroty chicken casserole. So, and again, it's dependent on what's in the fridge, what you've got lots of, just toss it all in the pan, keep it, would you say try and keep most things about the same size so they cook evenly or adjust according to, yeah. like this might take longer than well, a leaf? Yeah, I did the leaf bigger because it can just disappear, can't it? Yes. It'll just sort of go to slime a bit. I've got some celery because I put celery in everything. You never know you've had it, but it does something to the flavour. Yes. And I don't end up throwing it away. And I'll be honest, I was trying to do something without tomato. Because um, we also have quite a lot to do with food banks and things over here. And through lockdown, I ended up with... um. Lots of people had parcels and there were things they didn't need. And there were gallons and gallons and gallons of pasta sauce. Um, yes. And I think sometimes there's a suggestion that everything's got to involve tin tomatoes or a pasta <laughs> sauce. And some people would email me and say, please, can you just take it? I can't bear another bottle of pasta sauce in my cupboard. <laughs> so I thought, Let's do something without tomato. So for my remnants, I've chosen things that are on the yellow and white end of things rather than okay. going red. So yep. also that Tesco's reduced when I nipped down last night, yellow peppers. Oh, lovely. So they all go really, really nicely with that chicken. And some people might then want to start putting in different sort of peppers and flavours, you know, cayenne peppers or paprika yeah. or something. So I'm just leaving it really plain. And we'll, we'll ignore the fact that's not suddenly <laughs> bringing up in plain, is it? 
That's the, that's the joys of live TV. Proves we're going out live. <laughs> They're bringing up to say that's rubbish. Either that, or they're asking for an invite to. They're asking for an invite to dinner. They know they've got three calls. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What time's it ready? I'll be rain. Yeah. I'm doing the pepper, Wendy. You know, you said the size of things, because that again yeah. tends to disappear. I'm doing that bigger. Yes. Yeah. And again, full of vitamin C. Very healthy for you. Oh, really, really healthy and box things up really nicely. I think they wanted, I don't know, I probably paid 12 pence each for those peppers. And um, I always go for that because when the grandchildren are around, yeah, they just love peppers, don't they? Mm, yes, they mind do, funny enough. They'll be run through in a minute. It'll, it'll lick all the little bits that I've left and nibble our way around the green top and then, and then the rest of that. One of the one of the, the random facts that stuck with me about peppers is they actually hold more vitamin C than an orange. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. One of the as I say, it's when you pick up these random facts, and I didn't realise oh, that wow. good. I knew they had vitamin C, but apparently it's more concentrated than it can be found in an orange. Is is what I read. So. Yeah. I'm just going to go back to the tomato soup because I yeah. just found. All my little what I prepared earlier pots, <laughs> and I forgot to put a pinch of sugar in there. Okay. Because that fresh tomato can start to taste a bit tart. So right. I'm not going to taste it right now, but I'm just going to add so. probably a teaspoon of sugar first. Okay. And taste it. But if that goes okay. in while it's still cooking, so that's just cooking away. Makes me crumble. Oh, God, that smells nice. Not showing you yet. <laughs> but it's really honest. I, I could oh. say anything. I could be burning it all and you'd never know. Well, I am I am salivating just watching this at the moment. Thinking, gosh. Um, those fresh I cut down. That's basically what it is. These also were reduced. Can you see? They're like little chicken cuppa soups. Oh, right, yeah. Experimenting so, away as I was when I'd run out of chicken stock for you. These are great to put in. I can't open what it. What a yet. These are brilliant idea, in. yes. So, actually, you, and you've got all kinds of flavour in there to actually add into this casserole. And then it will also help thicken it, because this is a thickened one, when I add some water and put it in the oven. Oh, well, yes, so what a brilliant idea. A sachet of chicken soup or vegetable soup or something hanging around the back of the cupboard. Here's the place for it. So, it's, it's, it's sort of like a secret ingredient, really, isn't it? Indeed. It just happens to be a chicken one. I mean, if you were going down the tomato route, a, a tomato run, and some of those cup of soups are really, really reasonable. And uh, I can't really taste the difference between them. So I don't expect you can really see, but that has instantly thickened that base. Oh, right, yes, yes. I'm already smells chickeny. So I'm just going to put my chicken legs in it. If you can use some a pan that can go on the top and in the oven, that's fine. But otherwise, just transfer it all to a casserole dish. Yeah. And sometimes when I do that, I put all the vegetables underneath and the chicken on top. So it cooks through and steams up. Yes, and yes. I've got some um, nice chicken jelly there. Oh, yeah. Which has got all that flavour in it. I think I've got family trying to go, you can go through. <laughs> I think there are people we, not knowing whether they can walk through the kitchen or not. Kitchen or not. Well, we, we, we have... Um, 
we have people wishing we had smell -o vision because they haven't had breakfast yet. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, I think everybody um, might have a larger lunch today after watching this. And because I use those cup of soups, about two cups of water, maybe right. slightly less. I like quite a thick sauce. Depends yes. What, you know, we have different preferences, don't we? Some yes, we do. like the juice of a casserole to be quite thin. So if you use something like that, if you haven't yeah. got something like that, a little sprinkle of plain flour over those vegetables does okay. the same thing. Just to thicken it. Stir it in, to thicken yeah. it up and then add it. But these are these were, are great and they give it that extra flavour. And it's the kind of thing that we can all discover. I did it the other day with an Ainsley Harrier exotic sort of hot and sour soup that had been knocked down in Tesco's. Oh, I live an exciting life, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, world of difference. Um, what I, what I, um, I'm, I'm discovering at the moment is I'm, I'm learning all about pulses. So I, I have... I have uh, lentils and chickpeas that I've now started to thicken my casseroles up with because, again, that's another cheap and easy way um, yeah. that you can bulk the food up. You beat me to it. There's, um, <laughs> no, I won't get me back a red lentils out the cupboard now. But absolutely, really? red lentils are great because they're so easy. You chuck yes. some red lentils in there and thicken it. And it's yes. more protein again, isn't it? And yes. by saying that, you also reminded me of the lonely can of butter beans. What oh, was lovely. The there? So they're going then, in as well. Again, increase that protein. If you like sort of Spanishy flavours, this would be great actually to, to add that to. I'm just going to drain it off. Sorry, in my excitement, I neglected my can of butter beans. And now I have to thicken it too. Made something like this a little while ago, and our little granddaughter who's been staying with us was here. She wasn't sure if she liked butter beans. But because, um, of course, by the time they come out of that, they've got the lovely chicken gravy, which she loves, and the flavour. Yes, yes. And she likes another something. So, sorry, I'm, I'm just um, so, putting up that some comments about the really pulses going in. So oh, that's amazing. <laughs> if, if at the back of your fridge you've got a bit of smoky bacon or something at the very beginning. That's still, I can't find the right lid. How embarrassing is this? I'm just going to go and find the right lid. Can you catch me <laughs> So it works either way then with the pulses. We can do either or if um, you've managed to pick up some tins or you've got some tins that are coming near the sell by dates, pop them in as well. Um, as I say, you've got um, split peas, chickpeas, lentils, uh, barley. Oh, now look, I'll totally distract it now. Look at the crumble. Look at that beautiful crumble. Oh, it is. Oh, I'm really rubbish. I used to be a teacher and the children loved it in the days of overhead projectors because I never knew which way to put things on. And they always got about 10 minutes off in a lesson while I worked out where to show it on the screen. I'm a bit like that now. So, yeah, you have to go the opposite way. It's very confusing. Lovely. Do you want me to try it for you? No, it's too hot. Yeah, you need to leave it to cool a little while. And then, then, then just as we go, you can have us all salivating as you try it. <laughs> so that casserole's just going to go in there. Because I cooked the chicken before, and because we cooked, I would think, 
45 minutes. And normally, if I, this oven, once it's on, for the time in the day when I cook, it stays on. But if I was turning the oven on, I'd put them in at the same time. Right, so okay. 190 would be fine for both of those. And then it's not going to hurt the casserole if you take the crumble out before. And that crumble would last us a few days. So I've moved the tomato soup back now because I've got space. And I'm just going to let that boil. So just typing up oh, here, so about 190 degrees for about, did you say 40, 45 minutes for your, crumb, for your crumble? I think, how well, that we did the crumble. That's literally from That's fresh probably, 30 probably minutes. About 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. And again, I won't pretend to be very, to be very good at how long it is because it's or, always or, or until golden done. brown is what I shall type. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> until <laughs> golden brown is smelling far too nice. So then I just let this. The other thing I've learned over time is I think I used to start um, try and start cooking things before the pan had got hot. So um, yeah. my watching my watching of Master Chef and things like that shows me that they don't bother until the pan is really really quite hot to put yeah. everything in there. So I've learned to um that's the bit where I slow down a bit and then when it starts to cook it really goes for it. So how long are we cooking the um, chicken for, approximately? I put one I in, that, in the pan, again, pop on the lid and cook for... I would say about 45 minutes. Always, it might be shorter if you, um, when you cook it to start with and seal it, but always check with chicken, especially with bone-in, because of the pinkness, the pinkness on it. Yeah. Just, just be really, really careful. It is one. Well, we all know that. You just got to be so careful. Yeah. Here's another. There we go. I'll pop, pop that favorites. up in the comments. So, what have we got now? Cooking, cooking bacon. So, um, okay. rather than buying expensive packs of rashers when times are tight, I find these packs. They, you never know what you're going to get in there, and actually. There's a sort of a big chunk of bacon. Oh, gosh. Like part of a that really so, does so look good. You know what you get? It's not a tidy rasher, but if you want to cook, then you're literally using the bacon as a background rather than a rasher of bacon for a sandwich. I think that was about 80p for 500 grams. So, you know, when you're really looking to do things cheap, so I've just taken one of those lumps and chunks and cut it up and I'm just going to chuck it into a really hot pan. So, so did you say, that, what's it actually labelled? Is it called cooking bacon or just bacon pieces? Oh, yeah, or sometimes it's called, depends which supermarket, doesn't it? You know, bacon off cuts. Bacon Most off of cuts. In Tesco, they call it cooking bacon. Waitrose does a really good cheap is me or bacon bits or something. But you can't guarantee it'll be meat rashers. Sometimes it's actually a much better cut of bacon. So you get yeah. really nice so And I would think the flavour because the the chunkier pieces tend to be a little bit saltier too to add that extra flavour, don't they? Yeah. Sometimes, it, sometimes it's mixed up smoked and unsmoked. So mm -hmm. I'm always saying it's um, worth it. We had a tribe of children ourselves. We've got five children, just Chris and I, and, uh, and then they all start as our grandchildren. So although we don't all get together at the moment, but when we no, no, yeah. make a big cook, so yes, snap. I've children. got five children, so, and as you say, it's the getting together that's difficult. Yeah, it is difficult, it has been. 
But one of the lovely things, the last time we did this, my beautiful daughter um, did lots as well, but she's, she's moving today, and her little girl is five, the other one is two, but Isla, when she hasn't been at school, has just learned so much about cooking, and they so. cook together, and, you know, she chops safely, and is is learning all these life skills, which is wonderful. So, there's the bacon, all nice and crispy. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil. Do you, like me, having the bottom of your fridge, that vegetable dish? Oh, yeah, the cold, the cold leftovers, yeah. Yeah. Like temptation, to, temptation is to chuck it away, but no. I'm going to cut those little bits of spud up to go in there. Who can resist yeah. a bit of in our, house, in our house, nothing goes to waste. Definitely with cold potatoes in my house. I have a certain person that will, every time he opens the fridge to make a cup of tea or get something out, one disappears. So I think okay. I have a meal and and the especially if they're new potatoes they will all disappear or cold roast potatoes yeah and spuds is one of the things i find them um, are quite often reduced as well and if you keep them cold and dark they, they go yes. on forever no they do they last a long time much of the things that you can get reduced, they're past their sell by or best before date, but there's nothing wrong with them. No, that's right. So I've got lovely crispy bacon in there, that potato just soaking up that flavour. I won't put any more potato in. <laughs> And there were some peas left over from tea last night as well. Okay. So is it, are you doing this as a separate so, dish or are you adding this to the casserole? Tartar. We were definitely on the same way then because I was just thinking myself, mmm, that would make a lovely lunch, frittata. Yeah. <laughs> or, as one of my boys would say, what an omelette with vegetable wings. Because, <laughs> really, that's what it is. But, and these were some eggs that I found reduced. And having been brought up on a farm, as I was, it's not really a used by date on an egg. If, you, if you're suspicious, crack it in its own separate cup so it doesn't spoil anything. But they're sort of designed to keep. They don't necessarily need to be in a fridge either. No. I, I never keep my eggs in the fridge. Okay, so today's so bonus is says, four meals. So today we have. Um, it's just ringing to remind me, I haven't seasoned it. Ah, there we go. Too much salt in. And, and the blessing with seasoning is you can always do it afterwards. Once you've cooked it and tasted it, you can always add your salt and pepper then. I'm and if you do forget, busy. what I quite often say is, well, I wasn't quite sure what your taste was, so it's far better you season your own. <laughs> yeah. I think it just needs, for something with egg, I would always just put a little bit in. And then, would you put milk in a frittata? No. If, no, I, see, I wanted an if, if, I'm, if I'm being, if, if I do happen to have some spare Double cream, that might go in. Oh, get me behind me. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, okay, you know, if, if it's high days and holidays and we've had 
um, and yeah. occasionally we've had a cream tea or we've had something a little bit special and there's any cream left, then yes, I am guilty of, um, I can't possibly Please throw that away. not into temptation. <laughs> <laughs> No, I quite agree. I quite agree. In fact, I'll just have a look in the fridge. <laughs> oh, no. No, it is. Ha ha. I thought it had gone. So oh, what have we found of, here? Yeah, Greek, Greek feta, oh. please. There we go. Just what more do you need? I've got this top going so fiercely, it either boils or does. Nothing, so I've <laughs> had to move this over a little bit or else it'll be charred. But the tomato soup is boiling away beautifully. So, what an inveritable feast. There was a bit of a tail end of cheddar in there as well that would have done it. If oh, that like would, yes, peppers, that would be absolutely... If you like peppers... But I would have had to start a new pepper. There wasn't an old one hanging around in there. And the tomato soup, I'm going to be risky. I'm going to blend it now. I'll just clear this little worktop space. So we've got tomato soup, chicken casserole, apple and plum like crumble, ready. and a frittata, all in 45 minutes. Sorry? All in 45 minutes. I'm amazed. Before so. I started, I was looking for the lid. Of this. <laughs> yes. You have redecorated several kitchens. I'm going to say, <laughs> you, yeah, do it once, you soon learn. Oh, not working. Oh, there we go. So all the contents of the soup ingredients straight into the blender and job done. I take it it's just blend to desired smoothness. And if, if you didn't have a blender, Pardon? if you didn't have a blender, I guess you could use um, a potato masher, couldn't you? And just keep. Yeah, and if you if you haven't. I've done it before where you chop the tomato up much smaller, most of it will disappear, and then you get a not totally smooth. You can push it through a sieve. And lots okay, of sorry. I was slightly distracted there. I had a low battery come up. I thought my battery. Okay. But yeah. we're okay. I've just made, I made sure the connection is good. So I'm, <laughs> you're not going to lose me. It's all okay now, but that was a bit. Um... You can push it through a sieve. Oh, well, that's a good idea. Yes, put it through a seat. Ooh, that's Ooh. nice. Let me, I've got to get a dish. Okay. Oh, yeah. And actually, if I wasn't making the other things, this could have, I could have dealt with that sooner. Oh, no, that looks apt. You're right, the yellow have made that much more... Um, yeah. The colour from the red to the orangey, hasn't it? That looks absolutely beautiful. It gives me tomato. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, hang on. I better taste it for you, haven't I? Oh, you go, you've got to. We've, you know, you've got us all salivating here. Oh, gosh. I know. I made that myself. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I could have blended that a good 10 minutes ago. And so, then up there, and what I didn't bring in is the um, French stick that was reduced last night in Tesco to about 5p. Oh, um, so. If you can find tomatoes on the roadside, you know, that people are selling then, or getting rid of, and that, it's amazing. Yep, definitely going to um, have to oh, give that one oh, excuse a... Excuse me a minute, talk about yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're going to leave me the dubious task of saying, and we have Jess here sampling her products. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And what I can't really do right now is the last stage of this frittata. So I'm going to cheat a bit. You're supposed to put it under the grill, aren't you? But my grill is actually in the oven. Oh, right. Because what I'm going to do with mine, to cheat with mine, is I have... Um, I have a, a dinner service with what I call quite large plates. So yeah. I turn it on one plate, spin it back onto another, and then put it back in, and it turns it over. Hang on, tell me that again. Let me have a go. I use a very large plate, or two plates, actually. Enter stage left with a very large plate. Uh, yeah. So if you get two plates... Sorry. Two plates. And then I put turn put one plate up one plate so it's face down on the frittata. <clears throat> That's you know it. That yeah. I just let some of the runny egg underneath because I was pretending it was wrong there. Oh right. <laughs> and then put your hand on top of the plate, flip it over, take the pan off. Now put the other plate on top. Or you can just slip it into the pan like that. Slip it into the pan and it's going to cook the other side. I it's still say my battery's running low. Bear with me. I'm going to... Oh, look at that. Wendy. Amazing. Sorry about that. I have to just... Still saying my battery's running low, so I hope I don't lose you. It feels like a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. We both love you. Well, it shouldn't be. It's all like plugged in and it's all going. Oh, gosh, look at this. Nice portion of... So, I reckon mm. if you can get the free apples, you probably would have had sugar and, I don't know, it's probably about 25 pence worth. I mean, worst case scenario, if if you really don't feel confident of doing the crumble, you can pick the packet mix up for five for fifty p. Yes. Go for fifty p, as you say. You could. Sometimes it's cheaper when times are really tight. Not you don't need the rest of a bag of flour. You just literally want to know you can do that, don't you? So that can be the mm. best thing to do. Shall I? I feel. So I must try you feel to... you're going to taunt us. I know you're really going to taunt us, aren't you now? I, and you're going to make us there. go through the torture of watching you eat some of that. I always laugh at the telly chefs because they never go, oh, I didn't get that quite right. They always go, mmm, it's delicious. <laughs> I could do just the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you the truth because my job description says I must be truthful. So hold on. <laughs> there we go. So. <laughs> oh, so I love crumble. The apple and the plum go really, really well together. My real favourite is peach and raspberry. You know, that time of the year when they're selling peaches at or nectarines at a silly price in the supermarket. Yes. And they're yeah. too hard. Then they're too hard to eat. If you cut them into slices and just poach them in a little bit of sugar syrup like I did, um, and then just add a few raspberries and put crumble on. Oh, my goodness, crumble heaven. Mind you, most oh. things involving crumble are pretty handy. Well, my neighbours happened to hand me some apples yesterday. Mm. Um some Bramleys. So I think um, I'm going to be cooking later on, aren't I? <laughs> and you can actually do the cooking. You can do it with eating apples as well. Really nice. Shall I see if we can get a slice of frittata? Let me see. Doesn't look bad, does it? Nice hearty meal. 
egg, bacon, potato, peas, absolutely marvellous. Lovely frittata, served with another one of those tomatoes and some more bread. There we are. Wendy, I think I've exhausted my capacity. Oh, you're frozen. Is it just me? <laughs> Marvellous. Thank you, everybody. God bless. Bye-bye. Hi, sorry about that. I'm not sure what happened. My um, Everything's plugged in and it said that I was losing power. I rechecked everything, but it still blocked me out. So apologies for the loss of the end of that. I would really, really like to thank um, the Reverend Jess for presenting that fantastic cooking program and making so many wonderful dishes for us. Um, Thank you very much and goodbye.